ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्नम गुरु मे देवा सर्व कार्येशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामरूपिनी विद्यारंभं करिष्यामि सिद्धिर्भवतु मे सदा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु रेव परम ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः हरि ओम एंड ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम नायग्रा फॉल्स इन 2016-2017 इन कनाडा द पार्लियामेंटरी बजट ऑफिसर द ग्रुप that looks at what the government is spending money on, came up with these figures. A male who is in prison, minimum security prison, costs the people who live in Canada, the taxpayers, $130 a day. For those who are in medium security, the cost is $200 a day. And for those in 206, and those in maximum security, $254 a day. And now to put this in the right scale, for those who have committed a crime, but are not in prison, rather are being supervised by social workers, by government officials, it costs $49 a day. To put someone in prison costs far more than to have them outside of prison, but guided, supported. So where am I going with this? Someone recently told me that hindsight is 2020. Yes, we've all heard that before. But why do we live by hindsight? Why do we have to make mistakes to learn from them? No, why not live by foresight? The most sensitive, the most intelligent, they don't have to learn from their mistakes. They can learn from others' mistakes. Yes. And this is what Srimad Bhagavad Gita is. You are Prince Arjuna. Prince Arjuna cracked, despite having all the pleasure, possession, position in the world. But he didn't have peace. And he had access to peace, but he wasn't applying himself. And for us too. Unless we apply ourselves, we will be in prison. And I don't mean that externally, I mean an inner prison. You have this supervision, you have this guide in the form of Bhagavan Krishna or the Guru Shishya Parampara. Apply yourself. Living is easier than for you, for everyone. Living is more cheerful than for you, for everyone. Those figures are mind-blowing. It's six times more expensive to just put someone there, learn from your mistakes, than to have that support. 
And who pays for it? Everyone pays for it, no? It's samashti. It's not an individual. This month, we are focusing on resolving. Resolutions within ourselves, conflict, <clears throat> conflict resolutions beyond ourselves. And the last verse we studied in chapter 6, shared, try, abhyasa. Try to follow your resolutions. Try to reconcile that conflict outside of you. And be the bigger person. Vairagya is when you're holding on to the higher and you're letting go of the lower. That would be a very simple and effective way for conflict resolution is to try to be the bigger person. In the short run, it's easier to be the smaller person, no? When someone's being irate with you, how do you respond? Calm down. <laughs> Instead of just letting them be irate, speak your piece, and then we'll discuss this when you're ready. It requires that patience. It requires that understanding. Try and be the bigger person. Abhyasa Vairagya. And we complete this thought with our last verse. We are in chapter 9, verse 27. This is a whole series of very powerful verses. We're taking the action, the action item of this series. Please repeat. Yatkaroshi Yadashnasi Yatkaroshi Yadashnasi Yajuhoshi the Dasi Yat Yajuhoshi the Dasi Yat Yatta Pasyasi Kaunteya Yatta Pasyasi Kaunteya Tat Kurushwa Madarpanam Tat Unlike all of the verses we've studied thus far, one, two, three, four by quarters, we're going to go backwards now. Because really, the message of this verse is only in the last quarter. Everything else is auxiliary. Tat, that means everything. All of the verbs you're engaged in, Kurushwa, do them, madarpanam, as an offering to me. Engage in what you're doing for me. Me here means bhagya, that is self development, or bhagwan, that is your creator. Okay. Fill in the blank in the chat room. More important than what is said is, what's the answer? <laughs> who is saying? More important than what is said is, who is saying this? If you think of who you have a conflict with, I bet you, that conflict is not about the actual details, but it's the person whom you're not seeing in the right way that is causing you to get lost, and so you're focusing on those details. But if you can shift your focus of that person to Bhagavan, that this is your creator who's come to test you, or this is your bhagya. This is your opportunity to apply all that you know about Vedanta. It becomes so natural and easy to accept, to say I'm sorry, sorry, to not take offense in the first place. You can be part of every business program. You can take every happiness course. But unless you have the right vision towards a person, you will always find a reason to be in conflict with them. Do you agree? 
And if you have the right vision towards a person, it doesn't matter what they say, what they don't say, what they do, what they don't do. There will be no conflict there. And the most obvious example of that is with infants, with toddlers. They don't do anything right. <laughs> but there is no conflict when they break things, when they drop things, when they pull at you, when they... Anything they do, any verb. Because you love them. You can sense that divinity. You can sense that oneness with them. That is the only long-term solution to any conflict. Only a text like Bhagavad Gita would share that. More important than what is said is who is saying. More important than the letter of the law is the spirit of the law. Now we'll go backwards. So that was number four. Number three. Whatever tapa you do. So he's highlighting, Bhagavan Krishna is highlighting the verbs that you do, but now you have to do for Bhagavan. You have to do for self-development. So now the word tapa is used. Tapa means to burn. You know that. And when you are weak in tapa, that really is indicative that you're weak in give me the preceding virtue to tapa also starts with the T. What is a catalyst to tapa? <laughs> Titiksha. Long day for all of you also. <laughs> Titiksha is voluntary. Discipline. I'm sorry, sorry. Tapa encourages titiksha. This is what I meant to say. It's been a long day for me. <laughs> Tapa is voluntary discipline. And when you're trained in that, then titiksha becomes natural, which is involuntary discipline. So as an example, for those who are trained in not experiencing loneliness, those who are trained in enjoying their own company, the fact that you have to work from home or go to school from home, you're much better at it, no? You're much more comfortable with this because you're trained in that. You put yourself through that training. The tapa that we should try to bring out of ourselves is choiceless cheer. So much of what we do in life or what happens to us in life, we don't have a choice in it. Yes? And I feel the older you are, the more experiences you have, the more you come to appreciate that you didn't have a choice in this. And so the way to practice tapa, knowing that this will be offered to Bhagavan, is to be cheerful about it. Choiceless cheer. When you're tired of suffering, this will become your default. But as long as you're not tired of suffering, you'll still focus on, this was not my choice. I don't deserve this. But when you're tired of that complaining, that criticizing, that crying, you know you don't have a choice. You accept it, and so you're cheerful about it. Tapa. We go to the second line. Yet juhoshi. Yat dadasi, which really means whatever you're giving, whatever you're offering. Jehoshi is like yagna, and dadasi is like dakshina, to give you some Sanskrit words. Okay. When it comes to conflict resolution, this demands sacrifice. Will you always get your way? Have you always gotten your way? It requires sacrifice, no? Those who are not married yet, you have an agenda that you're going to get things your way, yes? <laughs> and then marriage teaches you fast that it's not just your way. And if you 
are unable to appreciate that sacrifice is demanded, then it will be commanded then. Demand is by choice, by agreement. Commanded is not. It's force then. Yes? It's almost like if you watch the show Suits. Um, it's like settling out of court. Either way, you're going to lose, sort of. You may as well lose less, correct? In which case, it's a victory. Yeah? A settlement, you feel like it's a greater victory. In court, command. You're going to lose. And even if you win the argument, you lose your peace. But here, the idea is to sacrifice. To give. Then you're doing this voluntarily again. So this is a demand then. This second quarter very much has to do with you should never be satisfied with your own self-development. When it comes to other self-development, you should always be satisfied. But when it comes to your self-development, you should never be satisfied. Giving Give to others and keep on giving. Let them feel strong. Let them feel right. If you think of intimate relationships, family members, we have this strange agenda or strange game plan that if we're the stronger party, then the less strong party will follow us and do what we do, do what we want them to do. But that's a very Rajasic, worldly strategy. It's very um, higher and lower. But the best way to create resolution is to empower someone, to build their confidence where they want to follow you, where they want to give more. But it has to start with you. You have to be ready to sacrifice. You have to be ready to give more for someone else to give more to. Yes? Think lots about that. I observe this too much where people are trying to suppress people, exerting their power, when you're actually stunting someone. But based on this quarter, you empower them. You lift them up. If they become better than you, that's your greatness. And now the first quarter. Yatkaroshi yadashnasi. When, and literally this means, whatever you do, whatever you eat. Bhagavan often references eating because he knows us. <laughs> Prince Arjuna was born in India, so he knows <laughs> where this will go. When Hanumanji had arrived in Lanka, he arrived in early morning during Brahma Muhurta, so like meaningful morning's time. And as he was exploring, what did he see? Everyone was sleeping. People were passed out, people were outside, people were on their beds. And then he heard Ram. And he followed this sound. And the only person who was awake was Vibhishana. And he followed Vibhishana, he observed them. They had a lovely dialogue because they found support in each other. And then Hanumanji asked, Where is Mother Sita? And Vibhishna said, Probably in Ashoka Vatika. And Hanumanji said, You mean you haven't gone to see her yet? And he chided Vibhishna in a very loving way, but in a, in a chiding way, that here you are saying, Ram, Ram, Ram. When his wife is kidnapped and is living in the same country and kingdom that you're in, and you haven't gone to see her, have you, you're a minister of Ravana, have you told your brother that he should return Mother Sita? And Vibhishana was burning now. He knew that he's doing, he's eating, but it's not enough. He's engaged in a passive way of remembering God, remembering development, 
but he's not doing this actively. And that's why the first word Bhagavan uses here is yat karoshi. He's saying anything that you do. To do this with more meaning. That wherever you are, apply yourself more. And you will find then, so much of the confusion inside will be resolved. So much of the conflict outside will be resolved. So summarizing our whole month on resolving, the first thought that was shared was, if you follow the message of our scriptures, you will be happy once and for all. Even if you invoke this message in your last breath before you die. And so what should you do? Start now. Make peace with yourself. Make peace with others. It does not matter how long you've delayed this. It does not matter how long you've been in a fight with someone. Make peace now. The next verse was describing what's stopping you from making peace. And what's stopping us is desire. We want something. And what this is showing subtly is we want something that's not peace, correct? We want, if it's about ourselves, we want position. We don't want peace. When it comes to someone else, we want to be right. We don't want peace. And that's why I continuously said, more important than being right is the relationship. The next verse, if desire owns you, then what else is going to own you is thoughts. Our thoughts, when they're not directed, will cause us to be distracted. Direct your thoughts. When you're in conflict with someone else, don't make it personal. Be objective about this. Someone who's distracted, if I'm arguing with my sister, I'll start bringing up details from her past or what's going to happen in the future instead of isolating that actual conflict. Correct? Don't we do that? We generalize. And I had read this in a more succinct way. Failure is an event, not a person. If someone fails to respect you, if someone fails to meet your time, Why do you brand them as a failure? It's an event. It happened. It's not a person. To direct your thoughts. And now the last verse which we've studied is, how do we quiet in the mind? How do we quiet in the desires? How do we make peace? The only way is with vision. The vision that Whatever development you engage in, whatever bhagya you engage in, is leading you to Bhagavan. The vision that the people around you are important. More important than your ego. More important than desires. More important than thoughts. Think. If you have an aging parent, and suppose your parent was not the best parent to you, And you know this is your last month with them. Recently, someone shared a question about that they can't go see their parents now because of the closure of the borders. Won't you automatically let go of whatever happened? Won't you naturally be the bigger person, knowing this is the last chance you have? You start to develop that divine vision so much more easily then. Let's chant this shloka together. Yat karoshi yadashnasi yajuho shi dadasi yat yat tapasya si kaunteya tat kurushwa madarpanam 
Oh.